Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. This is gonna be a quick overview really of the iCamper SkyCamp. It's a new tent from iCamper that's not even out yet, but I wanted to get this video out because it's on pre-sale right now and you can save $1,000 if you order on pre-sale. I believe it's gonna be coming out and shipping in spring or early summer. Anyway, I have one. They sent one out to me. I think there's only two of them in the US right now out for review. I am fortunate enough to have one of them. So there's not a whole lot of info on this tent because it's not even out yet. They sent it to me a couple weeks ago, but I've been right in the process of moving. I'm in my new house now and getting my old house ready to sell. And I'm about to leave to the airport in about 30 minutes to head to SHOT Show. So I just didn't, haven't had time to actually use it. I literally haven't even opened this up yet. So full disclosure, this isn't a, like a full on review. It's more of an overview. And the reason I'm getting it out is so you guys can capitalize on that pre-sale if it looks like something you might be interested in. The iCamper, the company is a South Korean company, which is cool because I'm half Korean. So I'm, you know, I always like Made in America products, but if not Made in America, 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 Korea is awesome. They produce very, very, very high quality stuff. So it's much better than the scrap you're getting from China, which unfortunately most, not all, but a lot of the U.S., U.S. Uh, rooftop tent companies, really, they're just getting their tents out of the same manufacturer in China, which, you know, is what it is. Anyways, this is made in South Korea, so it's a very high quality product. The company started on a Kickstarter a while back with their original Sky Camp, which was super ingenuitive. It was a hard shell tent, but rather than just having the footprint of a hard shell, like most of them do, it popped up and then also folded out. So it combined the ease of use and setup of a hard shell with the size and capacity of one of these traditional kind of fold-out style tents. So it was revolutionary, I, maybe game-changing, I don't know, I always really liked them. But that tent and all of the hard shell tents are very long, they're 85 inches around, which doesn't, I can't really do it on the back of a truck bed how I have it set up. You could put it on top of an SUV, if I had a full height roof rack, I could do that, but I like this setup, this kind of like half height rack over the cab, which we'll get into in a little bit. Enter the X cover, which is another pretty revolutionary tent. It's a fold out tent, but it does away with the clumsy big uh, cover that you gotta unzip and then fold up and it's flopping around and then to get it back up, you gotta flip it back over and run it on and then put the straps on. Anyway, I, that's the main thing I hate about rooftop tents, that style of tent. I love that it's a smaller package and it folds out and it doubles in size. That's why I like the folding ones. They're awesome versus the hard shell ones. But this one does away with the cover, which we'll get into in a little bit, and that's kind of why it's revolutionary. It's also a very thin tent. Uh, the tent itself is only 10 inches, actually. Uh, you could add another inch for the rail technically on the bottom, and you can get it with roof racks on the top, which I'll show in a second, and that'll add another two or three inches uh, on top with the roof racks if you get that. So yeah, pre-order, I'll link it down below, check it out. So the main thing you'll see probably here, and let me, uh, get a full on side view, is that it does overhang off the back. I don't really like that, it's really an aesthetic thing. It doesn't hang off too much. If you had a six foot bed, you'd be perfect. I have the short bed, the, the five and some change foot bed. But if you had a longer bed, excellent. On this bed, it looks a little weird aesthetically. I do have these front runner racks on the Diamondback cover. Maybe I'll talk about this more at the end. I probably won't because I don't think I'll have time because I really got to get to the airport. But check out my channel. I talk about this whole setup, though these bars are new. I'll talk about them more later. I can slide this back a little bit if I want to, if I need to distribute the weight a little better, which would really be an ideal setup rather than this where it's kind of hanging off the back rail a little more. So it's putting a little more pressure on the back rail, but it is what it is. Anyways, so that's the setup. The reason it overhangs my short bed, which is really the shortest bed you can get on a truck, is because this is 75 inches. It's still a good 10 inches shorter than uh, the typical hard shells. So a hard shell, I couldn't do this because the overhang would be really ridiculous. This is kind of on the edge. I would really love to see a version of this tent that is 10 inches shorter, and then that would be like the perfect fit on this thing. But right now, this thing, it's a big tent. I think it's a four person tent. I think it's a king size mattress inside of here, which is, which is great because the king size mattress back here and a tent, it's, it's awesome. And there's a lot of rooms, especially if you have, you know, a small family or a couple dogs or whatever you need to do. Bigger is better when it comes to tents, but the overhang 
For me, I wish it was about 10 inches shorter. Maybe they'll release a model in the future that's shorter. I don't know. So come with me and I'll kind of show you some of the features. So up top, I have this Prince Hugh rack up front. And then here are the racks on the iCamper. Uh, you do not need to get these racks. They are an optional accessory. This one is all optioned up, so it has kind of all the bells and whistles. But if you did need a rack on the top for one reason or another, this does have it. The rack here has little rubber on the top. You can put your bike racks, your kayak, whatever. And for me, I'll show here in a second, I actually have put some stuff on these racks. One little trip to Home Depot. This was actually some 12 foot roofing. Kind of roofing panels. So it kind of works because the racks on here and these racks are about the same height. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but if I had to take my old rooftop tent from my old pulley system and I already had this mounted because I was gonna do a review on it. So rather than take it off, I was just like, well, let's just try and put another tent on top. And I didn't have to drive very far. So if you're wondering, I certainly wouldn't recommend doing this, especially for any extended period of time, but I did it just because. So yeah, that's kind of random, not necessarily what they're intended for, but considering my system, these racks are almost perfectly flush. They're about an inch off. It worked for that. Over here is where you attach the ladder, and over here is where you can put some accessories. They have like some shoe bags and things like that. And then the ladder is separate here. It's made to clip on really quick, and I will test it down the road whether I can just keep it on while I'm driving uh, if I'm not using these racks. Because I honestly probably won't use these racks that often, but you could. A thing to note about the racks is if you have a bike rack or something on there, uh, you will need to take the bike off in order to flip the tent down. So it's kind of like you can carry it to camp, but then you really gotta take it off, depending on what it is probably, to unfold the tent and do all that kind of stuff. So one more thing for me is really, this tent's kind of designed to flip around all these tents they fold out on one side or the other i have my max tracks over here so i can't fold it out on this side so i really have the zippers the main zippers in the front it would be much more convenient if i had it flipped around and i had the zippers on the back here but i don't but let's go ahead and open this baby up all right so looks like we got some of the rails in here one thing I noticed, and again, this is my first time actually opening this tent, zipper is really nice. It just doesn't catch very easily. You always need to put a little more effort around the corners, but the zipper, super smooth. All right, let's put this ladder on. All right, I haven't read instructions on this or anything, so hopefully I don't break anything while I'm doing it. I'm guessing it's just like other similar tents out there. All right, there was little, one little clippy strap over there I needed to unclip. Okay, that was it. I, my old tent had the old ghetto ladder. A lot of the nicer tents have these ladders, which I haven't actually used that system. So again, you're watching. First time I've ever opened it up. So here it is. And I'm gonna miss my flight if I talk about it for too much longer. But quick walk around, this rain fly will come up. And so this is the cover. Rather than have that whole cover dangling down, we just have this. So I'm guessing we can fold this down. I'm gonna leave it up for now because I gotta put this right back away and hang it up. But let's take a quick peek inside. All right, I gotta film from back here. It is a nice like quilted cover. This half, there's two halves just stacked on top of each other. Looks like I just slide that one over. There is a pillow in there. This does have a skylight, but this is too dark 
for me to show. And there's a lot of really cool technology in these tents, like the honeycomb aluminum panels. Check out their website for more. All right, but that's it guys. It's huge inside of there. I apologize for how rushed this video is, but I'm literally gonna miss my flight if I, if I get too much into the features. But I did wanna get it out there. I will try next week to go on a camping trip and use it and get some, you know, I'll get some real life use out of it. I really don't like doing these kind of videos. And the only reason I'm doing it again is for the pre-sale. So if you're into that, capitalize on that. I'm not sure prices off the top of my head, but all the information, I'll link it down below check it out. I do a lot of other truck videos and stuff like this. So if you're into that kind of stuff, get subscribed to the channel. If you found this video helpful at all, even though it was kind of rushed, hit that thumbs up button, comment down below, feel free to ask me questions and I'll be able to answer them over the course of the next week or so. Until next time, guys, take care.